Senator, thank you for making time yes, for us today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. You have been such a huge per, uh, advocate for parental rights. Yes. Especially in light of the bill we just saw come into place in California. It's evil. That would hand parents custody battles if they don't affirm their children who are transgender that are transitioning. Yes. Why do you think that there is a war against parents right now in America? Well, there's a war against the family. Uh, the bottom line is simple, that the, the radical forces in this country understand and appreciate if you can attack the kids, breaking the family with the kids, like the breaking the back of the entire most important fundamental component of what makes America the strongest nation on earth is the family. One of the things God attended, if you read Genesis 1, 26, Genesis 2, 18, you see the importance of the leaving and cleaving and forming a family. And part of the challenge that we see here is that the most vulnerable component of the family are the kids. If you're going to attack anything, attack it in, the, in this infancy. California is attacking our kids. It's evil. I mean, literally taking away parental rights from parents who don't agree with the gender decisions of their kids. It's not wrong only. It's not immoral only. It's evil. That is bad for the country, bad for the soul of this nation. And frankly, it robs the parents of their right to choose and to be responsible for their kids. I can't think of anything that's more anti-biblical than, than this decision to take away people's kids. Do you think this issue will energize independent voters like we what we saw happen in Virginia just a few years ago, leading to Glenn Youngkin's victory? I think the more we as a nation empower parents to protect their kids, the more likely we are to return to a solid foundation to make decisions. One of the reasons why I've been promoting my Empower Parents plan is because it puts parents back in charge of their kids' smartphones, in the classroom, and in the locker rooms. I've said it several times all across the country. If God made you a man, you should play sports against men. This is something that conservatives and liberals, Republicans and Democrats, minorities and the majority population all agree in vast majorities that this is common sense and we are losing that sense in this nation. So having a conversation about putting parents back in charge is central to strengthening the foundation of this country. Think about the fact that when parents show up at a school board meeting asking their kids to be educated and not indoctrinated, the current DOJ labels those parents domestic terrorists. I do want to switch gears with you. We just saw that the nominee to become our next Joint Chiefs of Staff has warned U.S. military members that China is trying to exploit them for their knowledge, for their skills, to try to fill gaps in the Chinese military. Absolutely. You know, we have seen under this administration, it seems like China has become more emboldened. Yes. If you became president of the United States, how would you handle China differently than what we're seeing right now? Well, it's not the strength of President Xi or China, it's the weakness of President Biden that concerns Americans. We've seen what China has done. They're spying on our kids, they're buying our farmlands, and they're stealing our intellectual property to compete against us. As President of the United States, I would stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with China and with President Xi and say, not on my watch, we'll stop their malign behavior, will investigate their ownership so that they were, are not able to buy our farmlands, will stop them from buy, by spying on our kids by having every app on your phone recognize the origin of those apps. So important that four out of the five most popular apps come from China. It's access to our kids. And what's happening as a result of the access? We've had the greatest mental health crisis because kids spend so much time on their screens. We have to reduce that in order to create a more stable society. I would be the president who would stand strong and fierce against China. Let's talk about your rise and where you are. We saw in the last debate some criticism from you. I wanna read something that Mike Dennehy, a veteran of multiple GOP presidential campaigns said. He said, you have one of the best images, actually, of any candidate, but your first debate performance was a little disappointing to him. He said this, I absolutely appreciate Scott for being the happy conservative warrior, but I think that's important, but he's stuck. He's running in neutral, he says. How do you respond to that criticism? And will we see anything different from you in a few weeks on the next debate stage? I'll say that every time I do a town hall in Iowa, New Hampshire, my, my, my size of the crowd is bigger. And last week we had standing room only. So there's traction under my positive, optimistic, conservative message without any question. I do think that the question is, do we have an appetite for an adult in the room when there's a food fight going on on a, on a national stage? To two winners in that debate stage, 
Joe Biden's campaign for re-election and the media. The national media loves when Republicans fight with each other. The road to socialism runs right through a divided Republican Party. What you'll see on the next debate stage is similar to what you've seen before, which is that my ability to share and articulate a message of a vision for the future is key to us achieving that vision. Understanding the contrast between the candidates will be very helpful. Doing that in the midst of the food fight, we, we lost the opportunity to have that conversation. I will try to steer us away from a food fight to having a conversation that contrasts where I am on really important issues like life. There are three fundamentally different positions on that stage about the issue of life and protecting life in this nation. There are candidates who will not do that as president of the United States. We need to understand those differences as Republicans. And you didn't have a chance to even have a conversation about the important fundamental issues because of the food fight. Do you think that people are talking enough about abortion right now? Candidates are speaking enough about, we saw how it drew Democrats and um, independent voters to the polls in 2022. Do you think that it has become a big enough topic? Well, we certainly didn't spend enough time on on the debate stage. We certainly should understand that candidates like myself, Mike Pence, who both believe that creating a culture of life as president of the United States, I've said we must have a 15 week limit. Unfortunately, we have other candidates who say, let the states decide, allowing California to decide to have abortion on demand up until the day of birth is immoral. Uh, we can't trust them with to be to to take charge of parents and the parental rights. We certainly don't want to have them in charge of allowing abortions up until the day of birth. Yet we have Republican candidates who refused to back down from that position. One of the most challenging things I've seen for GOP candidates has been how to court Trump voters while also not upsetting them. Yes. You are running against the former president for the nomination. So how do you get more Trump supporters on board with you? I think the answer is to make sure that you're running for president. Uh, most of us spend too much time thinking about other, other candidates, other opponents. I think the more time we spend talking to the American people about their future, about their kids, the contrast between me and every other candidate becomes clear. The, the, it is important for us to, to make sure that the most important common denominator for the voter is their future, <clears throat> not our future. I think the power of persuasion is something that will separate me from the field. It's one of the reasons why we lead in the polls against President Biden. It's one of the things that we have to do a better job of as we continue down the road is have more people showing up and having a large conversation about how my candidacy is different in style and substance of the other candidates, well, we including the former president. Well, we appreciate how you brandish your faith so strongly. Thank You're you. so outspoken about it. So thank you for taking yes, time good to be here. here at Centerpoint to, to speak with us and our viewers. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> appreciate you.